give you a function, and then I tell you what's the derivative of this one, and you guys have found through the limit process, you guys found that the derivative of three x squared is six x. And I'm gonna change my colors, and I'm gonna write a different function. And the derivative of x, you guys found that derivative to be two x. And let me choose a different color. I'm gonna go ahead and write a cubic function here, uh, just for fun. Four uh, x to the third power, and the derivative of that, I'm just gonna give it to you guys, is twelve x squared. Do you guys see something fishy? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So hold on to that for the moment. Now, here's our first rule. It says rule one, and it says derivative of a constant is function. Well, yeah. Derivative of a constant function. Sorry. I didn't even say anything. The derivative of a constant function. The derivative of a constant function is zero. Now, why is that? Let's just think about it just from the graph, from a graph standpoint. So if I take the derivative of a constant and they illustrate that by C, why do I get zero? Well, because these are just horizontal lines. And every horizontal line, what's a slope? Yeah, so it doesn't matter where I find my instantaneous slope, the instantaneous slope of a horizontal line is always going to be zero. So if I write y equals five, then you say dy dx of five is zero. That's the same thing of saying derivative. I don't have to use dy dx to say derivative. I can also say y prime. y prime is zero. I'm just trying to showcase different ways to say derivative. Or I can go d dx of y. All three are different ways of saying derivative. And all the derivatives of a constant, the derivative of a constant is always zero. Now make sure you're not a robot. Do you know why the derivative is zero? Yeah. It's just a horizontal line. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero, correct? Yes. Okay, here we go. Power rule. So I want you to notice, and this is what essentially what that power rule is. How do we get the derivative of 3x squared to be 6x? Well, we did it with the limit process. So these are just patterns. So Leibniz and Newtons recognize these patterns, and that's how we got these rules. So 3x squared, notice the derivative of 6x. Derivative of x squared, notice that it's 2x. Derivative of 4x cubed, notice that it's 12x squared. These are the derivatives. How did I get them so fast? I think it sort of looks like you multiply the power by the coefficient. Yeah, and then you took away. Yeah, that's exactly what this tells me. Look, power rule for integer power, it's actually for any n. It doesn't have to be positive. So I'm just going to delete that for any n. It doesn't, have, it doesn't matter if it's positive or not. The derivative of any x value that has any power, as long as it's an x to any power, look at this. It's telling me that I can bring the n down and then subtract 1 from that exponent. And by the way, these are not, they, they didn't become robots. They looked at patterns. This is what they saw, and they got this. That's, the beautiful, that's why math is beautiful, because they can see things like this. Does that make sense? So check it out. Let's see if we can do some together using this rule. According to this rule, I can just take this derivative by doing what? This tells me to bring the n down. So bring that 2 down and subtract what? Minus 1 from 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x. Let's see if we can do this one. The derivative of x to the 7th f prime, I, you got to put that prime, I'm using that rule, 7x to the, there it is, you don't have to do that limit process anymore, oh look, there's a negative exponent, guys, it's the same, f prime, ooh, I don't know if we're going to be ready for letter D there, f prime of that, bring that negative 5 down, negative 5, and then just subtract 1, x to the negative 6, if you want to make that into a positive, bring it down. So let me rewrite it. f prime of x, negative 5 over x to the 6. All right. Before I do letter D, yeah. Before I do letter D, are we comfortable with what Ruby just told us about our exponent rules? Okay. 
before I do anything, I'm just, look, I'm not doing anything yet. The square root of x is the same thing as saying x to the one half. Can everyone sit? Can everyone do that? All right. So then I'm going to write f prime of x is equal to bring that half down. So there it is, half down. X and then subtract one from that half. Negative half. Law. Well, hold on. We're going to fix it. Law of exponents. I can rewrite this as. 1 over 2x to the half, which finally, 1 over 2 square root of x. So when you had that question last week and you found the derivative, you found that derivative to be 1 over 2 square root of x. And there it is. We did it like in five seconds. How do we feel? Okay. Let's keep going. All right, so this is just telling you guys, all right, so it says if u is a differential function of x and c is a constant, then it's just telling you that you can just take that constant and take the derivative of du dx and multiply it by that c. So don't worry, we're going to do this together. You guys ready? So y prime, it says let me get to my derivative, y prime is equal to, leave, look, I'm just following this, I'm just following this right here, 5 times, what's the derivative of x squared? 5 times 2x. What's 5 times 2? So I can write 10x. This is so fast. Look at letter B. Y prime equals, it's just telling me it says C times du dx. 7 times, what's the derivative of x cubed? So y prime equals. Perfect. Okay, yes, ask. Okay, we can do this forever and ever and ever, where we're going to go 7 times the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, or you can just start taking this exponent and multiplying it already immediately. Does that make sense? Because, you know, the, to save time, it's just algebra. So usually, we're going to go y prime equals, what's negative 20 times negative 5? 100 x to the? There it is. That's my derivative. If you want to make it into a positive exponent, 100 over x to the 6. Oh, look. Here comes your question, Miss uh, Taylor. Yes. Yes, you can. If, unless they tell you all exponents positive. Or you don't see it in the multiple choice answer. Before you take this derivative, guys, turn that into... 8x to the half. Can we do that? Now, once you've done that, here it is. y prime equals, what is half of 8? 4x to the negative half. If it's free response and they just want derivative, you can leave it alone right there. If it's multiple choice, it will probably have this answer. 4 over the square root of x. Are we okay? Negative one half means four over x to the half, and then that half means square root. How do we feel? All right. So now all we're doing, uh, I know it says a sum and difference rule, guys. All that means is that you're taking a derivative of a polynomial. That's all you're doing. Three x squared plus five x plus two, blah, blah, blah. Cool? All right. Here we go. This one says find dp dt, relax. This means take derivative of p with respect to t. If you want to write that down real quick. Uh, take derivative of p with respect to t. Take derivative of p with respect to t. So here we go. Instantaneous rate of change of p respect to t because this function is in terms, yeah, p prime, p prime. Here we go. dp dt equals what's the derivative of t cubed? Three t squared. Good. That's it. Let's keep going. 
It's a polynomial. Plus, what's the root of a 6t squared? 12t. You have a linear term, 5 thirds t. What's the root of a 5 thirds t? Negative 5 thirds. And then I have that 16. What's the root of a 16? Zero. Leave it alone. I just, this is a linear component. So imagine we have like y equals negative 5 thirds x. My slope is always negative 5 thirds. So my y prime is negative 5 thirds. Yeah. You can actually still do the power rule uh, and it still works. But whenever it's a linear component, you just drop the letter. And then zero, which is one. Are we okay, guys? Okay. Um, I'm kind of scared to mention something. Okay. No, I think we'll be fine. Uh, this is just a side note. It will come into play big time when we start doing related rates and taking derivative with respect to a different letter. So y equals x, simple function, right? If I, y, if I write y prime, the derivative of x is just 1, correct? No big deal. I, you're saying like, Chavez, why am I writing a side note for that? Uh, because I kind of want to, I like this notation better. dy dx is still 1. Because what it means is I took the derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, when we start doing derivatives with respect to different, it really is, oh man, I don't know if I should even mention it, dy dx, it really is dx dx. I'm not, uh, uh, you know what, I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to, yeah, everyone, these guys know what I'm talking about. When we start doing like, you took the derivative of something with respect to a letter, we took the derivative of x with respect to x, so it's really dx dx, which is just one. The derivative of y with respect to x, oh, that's dy dx. Derivative of t, dt, d. Do you remember that? Like, okay. Dx dt, dy dt, oh. Okay. All right. We're not going to do that yet, guys. Okay, look, relax. Erase what I just said. The derivative of y equals x is just 1. y prime is 1. That's it. You're good. That's instantaneous slope. Okay. Are we okay? Okay. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll fight that battle when we get there. We're like still two weeks away, three weeks away. All right. No, actually, actually, more like a whole unit away, so we're good. Okay, here we go. Example five. It says, find horizontal tangents. Remember this question? Does the curve y equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 2 have any horizontal tangents? If so, where? Okay. At the very minimum, guys, because you guys have all had algebra 1 and algebra 2, at the very minimum, you should see an even function. Well, almost an even function. Yeah, it is. It's an even function. And you should be telling yourself, like, okay, yes, I do have horizontal tangents. Maybe you don't know exactly how it looks. It might be a W. Or it might be, you know, I mean, something like that. Uh, and you, you're, you're going to have horizontal tangents like that, right, at those locations. So that's what we're doing. We're going to find our horizontal tangents. We don't know how the curve looks. So what am I going to do? Where my y doesn't, like where your slope is where my slope is zero. So that means how am I going to find a tangent slope that equals zero? I'm going to take a what? Yeah, I'm going to take a derivative because derivative tells me how my tangent slope behaves, and I'm going to equal that sucker to zero. Does that make sense? Can I use the word sucker? Yeah, I can. Right. All right. What's up? I'm going to take the derivative of the entire thing. So here we go. Y prime equals, what's the derivative of x to the fourth? Minus, what's the derivative of 2x squared? There it is, that's it. And I'm going to set that equal to what? Zero. Now it just comes algebra. You're done with calculus. So here comes algebra. I'm going to factor out a 4x. I'm going to have x squared minus 1. It does look like it's going to be a w. Are we okay? 
So here is everything factored out. X plus 1, X minus 1. You don't have to do it this way. If you just said Chavez, you can just solve for 0 immediately. Okay, that's fine. But I wanted to show my factors. So I have three values. 0, negative 1, and 1. This is where you have horizontal tangents. Let's prove it. Let's see if it's true. Let me get a calculator. I have one right here. And let me type this equation in. x to the fourth. Uh, can you guys hook me up with the equation? The original. x to the fourth minus 2x squared. All right, so check it out, guys. I'm going to graph, and yep, it does. Let me zoom in a little more. I definitely do have a horizontal tangent at negative 1. I have a horizontal tangent at 0, and I have a horizontal tangent at 1. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Cool or not cool? Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, upside down cat. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Uh, okay, look at this one, guys. And don't worry, we're going to stop in a little bit, and we're just going to have you find a whole bunch of slopes and a whole bunch of derivatives. And that's we got to do a whole bunch to get really good at it. This uh, I think this might be the last one. Yeah. Yeah, delta math. So this one says I stole this one from your textbook, but we don't use textbooks, right? Find a tangent to the curve y equals x cubed plus x at the points where the slope is four. What is the small smallest slope of the curve? At what value of x does the curve have this slope? Okay. How do I find an expression that will tell me all slopes? Find the derivative. Y prime equals 3x squared plus, plus 1. I'm going to set that sucker equal to? No, no, no. 4. Read the question. This one wants it at 4. So 3x squared plus 1 equals 4. It looks like this one. I can go minus 1, minus 1. 3x squared equals 3. So the only way that is true is if x equals plus or minus 1. I just solved. Well, I mean, I didn't really skip a step. 3x squared equals 3. That's only possible if x equals plus or minus 1, guys. Help me out here, guys. There's only, there's only one solution. Guys, 3x squared equals 3. The x can only be positive 1 or negative 1, right? Oh. Yeah. All right. Let's continue. Now they ask this question, guys. It says, what is the smallest slope of this curve? Well, and they're talking about this curve, the x cubed plus x. So think about it, guys. y prime equals 3x squared plus 1. 3x squared plus 1 will never be small. What's the smallest value 3x squared plus 1 will ever be? I think I heard someone say it. 1. You'll never go below that, guys. It's because it doesn't matter what x value I put, it'll never be negative. The smallest x value I can put that will zero out the 3x squared is zero. So 3x squared plus 1 will always be larger than or equal to 1. So I'm going to answer the question. I'm going to say the curve y equals x cubed plus x. will have the smallest slope of 1. And in parentheses, I'm going to put occurs at x equals 0. Close parentheses. I almost sounded like, uh, what's her name? Occurs. But through. I can't remember. She's, she raps. Cardi B. 
Yeah, that. A curse sounds like that. Okay, what's up? Oh, because they told me. Uh, they want, actually they want the point, so I still haven't even found it. I just found the X coordinate. Um, they want the X coordinate, they want the points where the slope is 4. And I actually haven't even found it yet. I've only found the X, the X down. Yeah, and when, and I did answer this part, but I haven't, I will to the curve have this slope. Okay, well, I already put it, curve the X equals 0. Yeah, let's answer the questions. Guys, I haven't answered the question yet. Notice, what did they want? Points. Do I have points? I don't have points, guys. I just have x coordinates. So let's find the points. So where do I have a slope of 4? When x equals plus minus 1, how do I get my, my y value? Plug this into the original. 1 plus 1 is 2. So one of them is 1, 2. And negative 1, comma, let's see. Negative 1 to the third is negative 1 plus negative 1. Uh, so negative 2. So there it is. 1, 2 and negative 1, 2. I kind of want to see this graph to see how... Do you guys want to see it? Yeah. As a matter of fact... As a matter of fact, I want to see the, the, the tangent line too. Desmos. Where are you, Desmos? Making fun of me? Because <laughs> students that make fun of me usually end up, uh, uh, I'll stop. I don't want to say anything. And then, oh, Ms. McLaren's going to call me in. And, Did you threaten our kids? Like, no. Snitches get stitches. I don't even know how that relates to anything, right? No one stitch out. Uh, all right, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, my function. What's my function again? Y equals X cubed. X to the third power. Where's the carrot symbol? Plus X. Okay, and then I have a point at 1, 2. So Y minus 2. And then equals... 4x minus 1. Check it out. That definitely looks like my tangent. And it has a slope of 4. There's another one right here too, right? So check it out. y plus 2 equals 4 parentheses x plus 1. Yep. Those two lines are definitely parallel and they're tangent. There it is. And their tangent. Do you guys see that? Cool, right? Okay. So let's stop here.